So this is a video I hoped I wouldn't have to make, but here we are. So for those of you that didn't see the video, the Drac Maiden went pretty well. I had a few issues with the CG and tuning, so it was a bit pitchy, um, but overall the Maiden went fine. I had two flights, landed, took it home safely, all good. The next day I took it out for another flight, but unfortunately this is when the disaster happened. I'm going to just let you watch this clip and then what we'll do is we'll come back to it and I'll talk you through it because there's a lot happening in such a short space of time. So yeah, that was me stepping on my transmitter and cancelling auto launch and sending the drag into a fence at 88 miles per hour. We'll just go through the clip again uh, and I'll explain what's going on and then uh, I'll show you the damage that's done. So the big drag has always been one of those planes that I'm not really looking forward to launching. It's heavy and big and it just is a bit harder to get in the air than most of my other planes. However, the launches on the maiden day went really well using auto launch, so I was kind of fairly confident at this point that everything would go okay. However, the wind was coming from a direction that it rarely comes from in my flying field, meaning that I had to throw it towards this forest here, um, rather than throwing it in the nice clear direction. My flying buddy likes to call this the forest of doom because it's really large, the trees are really tall, and it's really thick. You only have to go into it a few meters and you're in darkness because so little light gets in there. So once you lose a plane in there, it's almost impossible to find. And this has happened. So what happened is my focus became more on those trees than it did on doing a good throw. At this moment, what's going through my mind is that wasn't a very good throw. Quickly, let's get back to the transmitter. And here was my biggest mistake. Like a clumsy idiot, I go and step on the transmitter and I must have kicked the elevator stick and therefore cancelled auto launch. You can see at this point it's actually a good angle of attack and it would have recovered if I hadn't kicked the transmitter. But you'll see in a second the drastic change in angle. Once I finally got the transmitter in my hands, I'm looking up and I'm actually expecting it to be above the tree somewhere and wondering why I can't see it. Just remember that all of this happens within the space of three or four seconds. At this point there's not really much I can do, I drop the throttle when I see where it is, but within a split second it's already hit the fence. And then here's that same incident again from the DVR recording. And at the very last frame that you see here before it completely cuts out, you can see I was doing 142 kilometers an hour on impact which is just over 88 miles per hour. So here are a few pictures of the damage from that incident. As you can see, the nose has snapped clean off, but it's not that bad considering what happened. I think if it had been any other plane, it would have been absolute confetti, but the drac foam is just such tough stuff. So beyond the damage to the airframe itself, I also had a 10,000 milliamp 6S LiPo, which was ready for the bin. The rear main carbon wing spar snapped, the motor was dead, the Osmo Action HD camera was also dead, and the Dragonlink antenna had its connector ripped off. So as you can tell, this mistake was quite costly in time and also in replacement parts. But anyway, let's take a look and see how this drag looks now. So after the crash, I did go around collecting everything that came from the drac. This is not just the electronics, but all of the bits of foam that came off it too. So when I slotted it all back together like a jigsaw, 
I could see that already I was missing barely any foam whatsoever, so it was quite easy to glue it back together with E6000. So where there was any damage to the main body or the wings, I made sure it was reshaped and glued back together with E6000. I pulled back any laminate and vinyl that was covering damaged areas. Uh, and then I reapplied the 3M90 glue, reapplied the laminate and also reapplied the vinyl. The nice thing about having the vinyl wrapped plain is that it does really hide those areas where you can clearly see it had been glued back together. Where the main Corex lid had been damaged, I taped that back together and then covered that in the 5D carbon wrap. The funny thing about this drac is it actually flies better now than it did before the crash. In the Maiden it was running a bit tail heavy and you could see it was quite twitchy on the pitch, but now that I've fixed the CG issue, its performance is pretty solid. This quick clip of over 170 km h pass is a pretty good example of that. I'm under no illusions that this drac will never be as perfect or as strong as it was when I first built it, however it flew so well in the remade and after the crash I'm not going to let it bother me anymore. Because to be honest with you I was really angry with myself about this stupid mistake for probably a good week after it happened. But I guess these things happen, you have to learn from it and move on. So the good news is this drac does live on, there will be more flight videos from this in the future and there's a big motor upgrade coming soon. Thanks for watching.